The Space Medal of Honor. Awarded to America's men and women who in the performance of their duties as astronauts have distinguished themselves by exceptionally meritorious efforts and contributions to the welfare of the nation and of mankind. To all of us, their lives and achievements have not gone unnoticed. For more than 60 years, astronauts have aroused our imagination and touched our emotions like few others have or can. We've experienced through them the marvel of space travel. From the power and spectacle of the launch, to the joy and amazement of weightlessness. to the awe and wonderment of landing on the moon. Wrapped in those brief moments of anticipation and fulfillment are perilous feats of courage, commitment, integrity, patriotism, and sacrifice that have always left us wanting more. Since 1969, when Congress established the Space Medal of Honor, there have been just 28 recipients. As was the case when he was the first to walk on the moon, Neil Armstrong led the way. Since that time, the honorees are a veritable who's who of NASA and the space program. They've included Mercury astronauts John Glenn, Alan Shepard, and Gus Grissom, Jim Lovell, Frank Borman, John Young from Gemini and Apollo, and Space Shuttle crew members Shannon Lucid and Robert Crippen, just to name a few. Added to that distinguished list in 2004 was Francis Richard Scobie. From a very early age, Dick Scobie dreamed of flying. From his home near Auburn, Washington, he marveled at planes taking off and landing at the local airport, all the time hoping one day of becoming a pilot his personal quest to fly began in 1957, at age 18, when he enlisted in the United States Air Force. Assigned to Kelly Field in San Antonio, Texas, Dick worked as an airplane mechanic during the day and at night attended community college. While in Texas, Dick also met and married June Kent, whose educational ambitions matched those of her new husband. In the summer of 1963, the couple, along with their young daughter, Kathy, moved to Tucson after Dick was accepted into the Air Force Institute of Technology and the University of Arizona. Upon graduating two years later with a degree in aerospace engineering, he was chosen for officer training school and following a quick recess back in San Antonio with June Kathy and now their son Richard, they moved once more, this time to Georgia, where newly commissioned Lieutenant Dick Scobie got his first chance at flight training from the seat of a T-38. A year later, he received his wings. Given his choice of planes, he selected Lockheed C-141 Starlifter, a new addition to the Air Force cargo fleet. His missions took him around the world, almost a prelude for what lay ahead. However, the bliss the family felt turned to concern when Dick volunteered to fly combat missions in Vietnam. For his service, he was promoted to captain and received his first decorations, the Distinguished Flying Cross and the Air Medal. His return home after a year at war 
was met with a new assignment, the Aerospace Research Pilot School at the famed Edwards Air Force Base in California, the home of America's test pilots. Over the course of the next decade, Dick logged thousands of hours in dozens of aircraft, including the Boeing 747, the experimental X-24B lifting body, the F-111, and the C-5 Galaxy, the largest transport aircraft in the American military arsenal. As with all great pilots, he wondered, what next? The answer came in January 1978, when Dick was selected by NASA to be part of the space shuttle program. The years of hard work, training, school, persistence, and all the sacrifices made by him and his family seemed to have finally paid off. The journey ahead was to take him above the sky and into space. Dick Scobie was not just a pilot, but an astronaut. In April 1984, he lifted off on his maiden voyage aboard the Challenger Orbiter on STS-41C in what was to be an historic flight to repair for the first time a satellite in space. Always easier in zero-g, moving around up there is really nice. Put on the seat belt, just hold me in the seat while we we're doing some of our burns. You notice it takes a few books to do that operation we got. Uh, and that all went uh, very normal as far as we were concerned. The mission was a resounding success. Eager to return, he was chosen once more this time as commander of STS-51L. Their job was to deploy a new satellite, study Halley's Comet, and carry the first teacher, Krista McAuliffe, into space. The crew of seven, trained for months on end, preparing as Dick Scobie always did, for every contingency. When the morning of the flight arrived, January 28, 1986, he felt confident the cold winter chill was a minor detail as he and his team were readied for launch aboard a familiar ship, Challenger. At 11.39 a.m., they lifted off on what would be Francis Richard Scobie's final flight. As one of the nation's Space Medal of Honor recipients, Dick Scobie's life serves as an example of the sacrifice, commitment, and dedication necessary to achieve one's goals. His successful pursuit of becoming first a pilot and then an astronaut led him from a small town in Washington State all the way to the stars. Today, the National Medal of Honor Heritage Center recognizes and celebrates Francis Richard Scobie and how his story is a guiding light for all of us on our journey ahead. <laughs>